I'm Igor Frank. Um, I'm a staff urologist uh, at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester. I specialize in uh, treating patients with prostate cancer. Uh, surgical treatment options for prostate cancer, there are three uh, treatment options available to patients with prostate cancer. There is laparoscopy, conventional open surgery, and robotic surgery. In the United States, the most, cur uh, the most commonly performed surgical procedure for prostate cancer is robotic prostatectomy. The second most commonly performed surgical procedure is open prostatectomy and laparoscopic surgery for prostate cancer in the United States has fallen out of favor with less than 1% of all surgeries in the United States being performed laparoscopically. The reason that occurred is that Robotic surgery offers the same advantages as laparoscopic surgery and is done through the same set of incisions, except robotic surgery offers much improved instrumentation and much improved visualization as compared to laparoscopic surgery. Many patients that come into my office inquire regarding the differences between open surgery and robotic surgery, and I think that's a very important question to address. There are multiple studies that have been performed comparing open prostatectomy and robotic prostatectomy. If I were to summarize all of those studies in one or two sentences, it would go something like this. I, I feel that robotic surgery is at least as good as open surgery in terms of things that matter. And things that matter with prostate cancer surgery are cancer control, preservation of urinary control, in preservation of sexual function. In respect to these outcome measures, robotic surgery is at least as good as open surgery. Some investigators claim that it is better than open surgery. I maintain that it's at least as good. However, robotic surgery offers advantages as compared to open surgery. It results in less blood loss, fewer transfusions, shorter hospitalization, shorter duration of catheterization, and overall quicker recovery and quicker return uh, uh, to work. Majority of these benefits are related to the surgery being performed through smaller incisions and uh, the fact that the abdomen is inflated with gas which results in much decreased blood loss. However, patients electing to go for robotic surgery must be warned that the amount of surgery that take pl it takes place on the inside of the human body is still as large as what occurs with open surgery. What differs is access, and therefore that's what results in um, quicker recovery. Typical recovery following robotic surgery includes one day in the hospital, although some medical centers are able to perform this on an outpatient basis. The urinary catheter stays in the bladder for a total of seven days, and majority of patients are able to uh, return to work two to four weeks after surgery. Because of the minimally invasive uh, nature of robotic surgery, uh, there are several investigators that pointed out that medical complications um, are less common in uh, patients undergoing robotic surgery than open surgery. However, this needs to be, uh, uh, still needs to be verified in larger studies. I do hear quite often from my patients that uh, they're being told that robotic surgery is an experimental treatment modality. I do feel that that's inaccurate, and um, I feel that robotic surgery is currently a well-accepted treatment modality, and again, the most common commonly performed surgical procedure for prostate cancer. Regardless, prostate cancer patients following surgical therapy require lifelong follow-up with PSA. In my practice, the first PSA check occurs at three months after surgery, and uh, this frequency of follow-up gets extended once the patient has been cancer-free for a period of time. Um, and this, of course, depends on the aggressiveness of their malignancies. For a typical patient, they get a PSA measurement every three months for the first one to two years. Then the frequency is extended to every six months for the following two to three years. 
and eventually they return back to yearly PSA measurements. However, a PSA recurrence or a measurable PSA following surgery does raise a red flag that need to be further investigated by your physician.